to live to live is to be to live is to be to be or not to be to be not to be that is the question that is the question whether tis nobler in the mind to bear the expectations and confines of established society or to take a stand against a sea of strictures and by opposing and them change them to dream to create to live for a long time america represented a land of possibility where expression came to paint frederick jackson turner an american historian proposed his famous 1893 frontier thesis, which set forth the notion that America's culture and democratic principles spring directly from its frontier. But history has not been kind to the novelties and propositions of the new word. The established powers beating out scorn from skepticism, Monet, Van Gogh, Stravinsky, Jefferson, the faces of free thought rejected, loathed and slandered in their day to be now raised up on the highest pedestals of art, thought, and vision, overdue vindication. The popularity of water lily postcards cannot broker the blows of closed minds. Before the postcard, there was one man, two women, a third, and after years, more and more. By then, it is too late. And so the dreamer is often foiled by an unwillingly unmoldable medium, humanity. But he is not stopped if he is true. He blazes, riles, rises with pen and ink, with rush, bite, for himself and those who would believe. Traceable, traceable through human, human existence is the defining element of American culture. As a, As a nation, the United, the United States spread a people of dreamers and doers, bluesmen and beatniks and columnists, authors and prospectors, punkers and freemen and entrepreneurs, thinkers, writers, explorers, gamblers, folk freaks and freakouts, farm boys who went to New York and city boys who ran to you seven, all for gold, love, and freedom. Tinkering, polishing, scampering, dashing, smashing, and exhaling were the sounds of America. Some still are, but the spirit is fleeting. The exceptionalism and energy of a nation's people has subsided. We are the bourgeois, the elite, the brute existent against which the minds of our so-called third world define themselves. To be American has come to be filthy. We are excess, obesity, gluttony, and wastefulness. We wallow and relish in our own mud and sludge. America is losing its frontier, its proving ground, its lifeblood. The James Dean and Jack Kerouac hero is a buried one. Tom Sawyer, the dreamer, and Huck Finn, the doer, are mysterious faces. Activism and mobilization are teenage play toys. Greenpeace and dark fur are pop culture banners. Any drop of sincerity is drowned in an ocean of breakers. Pseudo-individualists in China-made t-shirts. Africa's plight is a sympathetic one, but the innocent black man's is not. The cadence of stagnation beats year one, two years, three years. Beats racism, corruption, and passivity. Expression and innovation, the products of individualism and exceptionalism, are wanting in contemporary America. Science and technology are foreign notions to our children. The explorer is dying. One.
two. Two. <laughs> what is this? Three. We are not without hope. There are those among us who will say America is true and free still. Still Walden Pond, still the Mississippi, still the Rocky Mountains, still the childhood spirit of adventure and disregard. So run! So run! In Twain's so America, America is to be in exceptional America, the individual means so much more. Life lived is without want. We are human, and it is the best thing in our capacity to be human, and to live life, to love life. What the hell is this? Art, film, words, pretension. None of that. All of that. Free right clamped down root canal into my head. So run. So run. So, so run. run. Let dreams deferred ignite along the road, from coast to coast, in a resounding choral. Amen. <laughs>